Hey folks, Reloading Bench back again. What I wanted to cover today was how I've progressed with my progressive press. When I put my first uh, Hornaday lock and load together, um, it was essentially the, uh, the dies for uh, decapping, resizing, obviously powder drop, uh, a powder check, seating, and then crimping. And that worked fine. And uh, was even better when I discovered uh, inline fabrications array of accessories so that when I was loading, I would have my brass and bullets and obviously output so that my process was essentially load and this will actually stop because it's working as designed. There's no powder in there, so that would stop me from doing anything on the press. I would then hand feed a bullet, seat it, crimp it, and I would have my finished product. No primers as no primers or powder as this is just a dry run. When I put this press together, uh, I wanted to do things a little bit differently. And um, I set it up very similarly. And then uh, I remember Hornaday announced their bullet feeding tubes, very comparable to what Lee does with uh, their bullet feeder. So I like the idea of the ammo plant to some degree, but I don't like the footprint that the ammo plant takes in terms of everything off to the left, the noise, the size, the space, you name it. Uh, it just wasn't a direction, obviously the cost wasn't a direction I wanted to go. So <clears throat> I was looking for the poor man's version of trying to get there to some degree. And when Hornady announced these bullet tubes, I thought that was pretty cool. Because um, if you look at what they already offer in terms of uh, a bullet feeder, um, you know, half of it was there, but for those who wanted to go a little more manual or kind of in between, um, this actually worked out quite well. So let's see if I can adjust this just a little bit to catch the die. So you're seeing just the tip of it and I'll get a, I'll get a better close up when I move the camera around. But essentially you're putting this tube, you're filling the tube with bullets. It's got a cutout. Uh, it's aluminum based, rather stout. And you fill your tube with your bullets. Put it in the, uh, in the die, seating die, or bullet feeding die rather. And empty that, pull the, uh, quarter pin, cotter pin, depending on where you're from, and uh, the bullets drop in, and then you essentially have uh, a way of feeding um, so that bullets are fed. I'll drop one in. So now all I'm doing is touching brass or handling brass. And hopefully a bullet will drop. Yes, yay. That's always a good thing. And seat and done. Uh, this one I didn't decap. So again, finished product. The problem I found, and I'll, I'll move the camera around at, at a better angle so you can see this a little more uh, close up. The problem slash challenge had to do with retaining this tube. So back in a minute. And I filled this tube about halfway. Normally I will have it 100% uh, full. And I think it holds maybe 30 some odd bullets. I counted a long time ago and honestly can't remember. But uh, watch what will happen. Let me turn this up just a little bit. So this is just sitting in here, uh, gravity holding it in, a little bit of a lip. But as you work your rounds around, 
with this full, and this has happened uh, more than a few times, and what caused me to do what I'm going to show you in this video. But as you come up, watch what happens here. If I can get this to feed. There we go. So as the casing goes in, watch what happens to this whole bullet tube. And see that? It just about fell out. So when this is completely full, there's a lot more top heavy weight. I've had this go all over the floor. So what I was doing was every time I'd feed a bullet, I would hold it so that it wouldn't move. And sometimes I'd forget and then it would walk right out. So this got old pretty quick. So I'll show you what I did. In fact, half of it is here and I'll pull out the other half. So hang on. So my solution was to put a clamp, a hose clamp on the bullet feeding die and to put another hose clamp with two springs that connect to little O-rings that I've uh, fashioned and put on the side here. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm dropping this in, feeding it, just like the other one, so this can come out very, very easily now. And then I go ahead and hook up one side and the other. So I've got the bullet window visible in front of me, not so much in front of the camera. And I'll put this, uh, I'll put the camera in a different position once I show you how this addressed my solution or my problem, this solution addressed my problem with. This is really in there now, very snug. It's a good tension spring, both of them. Uh, I've uh, clamped it onto the hose clamp on both sides, so this is not going anywhere, not launching. But notice the movement or lack of the movement when I come in, nothing. Not moving at all. And come on, bullet. Ooh, that's in there. Yep. Not moving. So that solved my problem. And I'll move the camera on so you can get a close up up front. So here's a close up uh, larger hose clamp, smaller hose clamp good size spring and I think I have the spec somewhere but not directly in front of me so maybe later I'll post it uh, when I do the video and I tried a couple different springs this was the first one I used so you can see the difference and my first approach and the reason this looks like this is because I used this wire to fashion my little o-rings so that I can clamp this on. And it's hard to see with the camera in the way. So again with this moving or with the press doing its thing you won't see any movement except when I'm hitting the camera trying to uh, get the uh, arm down but as I push the arm and the ram goes up you won't see any movement any noticeable movement and there's my bullet yank that off I'll do it again so the bullets drop so you can see the bullets moving as I play with the arm and as I go all the way down no movement and there's my bullet once again so if I try to pull this off by hand that's not coming off accidentally I mean there's a lot of resistance there so my first attempt at building this 
was to just do it with this spring and only do one side. And that worked reasonably well, but what I found happening, especially with a full tube, was there was a tendency for the tube, especially when it was full, if I got some resistance or the bullet pushed the tube, the, uh, the brass pushed the bullets up just enough and caught this lip, it was flipping out to the right. So two springs prevent that. So it essentially gives me part of the ammo plant, and that would be a more mechanical, hand-fed way of bullet feeding so that uh, it's not as industrial or as fancy or as expensive or as noisy as the electronic bullet feeder that uh, only needs to be fed uh, once in the hopper versus uh, a handful of times with uh, refilling this. And to me, that's an equitable trade-off. So I keep the small footprint from the bullet feeder. It's about eight inches taller than the top of the powder charge. So it's still a uh, very uh, small footprint. And uh, again, no, no additional power or issues. So that is my mechanical way of addressing the bullet feed option without going to uh, a Hornady or Mr. Bullet Feeder or any of the others out there. Hope this helps. Take care. Got one thing, and Murphy's Law says this won't work right <clears throat> because it's on film. So when you need to reload this, you can sit here and do it by hand. Pop a bullet in. Load it. Make sure the cotter pin is in there. I've had that happen before. Bullets go everywhere. But I wanted to kind of simplify, speed up, make it uh, consistent. So I came up with this idea for two reasons. One, because when I'm not using my press or I'm switching out a press, I will put the press I'm not using uh, in an inline, fabric, uh, inline fabrication uh, press mount. Uh, uh, it's a wall mount, essentially a, a clip to hold the press in. Very heavy duty. Uh, the Hornady press with all its riser and everything else is quite heavy, so I didn't want to take the chance of bending the inline fab wall mount uh, for the press, press plate that holds the press. So what I did was I took a 2x4, cut it, and when I pop the press in the inline fab wall mount, this comes right under the press so it uh, relieves a lot of the, uh, the weight of the press. I then took that idea a little bit further and routed out uh, a, a groove, two grooves, one groove for the bullets and one groove for the mouth of this particular um, bullet feeding tube. So what I do is I get my bullets ready and then I just kind of zip them in here, throw them in, and that loads it up pretty quick. And then I reload that, uh, ready for the next tube. And then I just throw it on the uh, bullet feeding tube. And that is that. So I'll say that uh, now I'm done for now. Take care.